What is up, everybody? It is Jake with the MF Film Room. Thank you so much for being here. If you want to be up to date on all things EA College Football, hit that red subscribe button right now. Do it. Click it right now. Okay, also hit the like button as well. That really helps out with the algorithm. If you want to be up to date on all of that, in addition to getting some college football content, go follow me on X slash Twitter. That fame is growing. I also have Master Football with Jake Posey where I discuss college football itself. But right now, we're here for EA College Football News. Let's get it going. All right, guys, we are continuing our 12-part series of the features or potential features in EA College Football. I want to make sure, first of all, that we discuss this because a lot of people are like, I don't understand why you're talking about this right now. This game's not even going to come out. There's already a lawsuit against it to prevent it from coming out. Well, this just happened just yesterday. Here we are from Pete Nakos, who is a college sports business and transfer portal reporter for on three he says news the brander group and one team partners have reached a settlement agreement in lawsuit regarding ea sports through the agreement the brander group has agreed to withdraw without prejudice its litigation against ea sports guys the game is coming and it cannot come a day too soon now we know right now that the game's obviously not going to come out probably until the first Tuesday in July. That's what it's done for years. But again, right now, let's get into those features because we've gone through a couple of things here. Got through Transfer Portal, gone through NIL. Let's continue on talking about the big evil elephant in the room when it comes to EA, monetization. So for monetization, we know that unfortunately it's just, it's a fact of life. EA is a big company. Now the cool thing about this game from what I understand is if you talk to Matt Brown, who is the best reporter on this, he is, has his Extra Points blog, which talks about sports business. He's heavily involved. He's the number one person who's doing freedom of inf information requests to find out information about this game. He's a top guy. He basically says that right now, this game has an expectation to only do about 25% of the sales of Madden. And again, if they do 30%, whatever it is, that's going to be good. So with that, the cool thing about that is, is the financial incentive to milk this product for as much money as possible might be lower than Madden. And again, they want to get Madden right. Madden is its own thing. Again, it's got those player packs here and there, whatever it is. What I want to do right now is discuss a couple options for monetization with this game. Again, we're referencing back to Madden, talking about the future, what it could potentially monetize here and there. What, what I think a lot of fans of EA College Football would be okay with that monetizing, you're going to find in this video. Remember here, please like, share, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. Get in the comments and let me know anything you want to know about. But again, let's get into that content right now. So we're going to go over monetization right now between this of history. We're going to go through the factors to consider and then the recommendations. So history is, is a little blank. There's only a couple different things I can really think of that have been monetizable. So uh, a couple of those things are from Madden and NCAA. They both have the, their own ultimate team. Madden has ultimate team, Madden ultimate team, which is Mutt. And then NCAA had ultimate team. It should have been called Nut, but again, they just kind of chickened out. Also available at, with that was jersey packs. You could buy those. I remember when NCAA was announced that it wasn't coming back. I went in and bought all of the jersey packs that I could. No, they weren't making the game anymore. Might as well buy it just so you have those on your game. All the way back in Madden 2011, Madden Ultimate Team. Madden Ultimate Team is a downloadable game mode released on January 7th of 2011. In this game mode, users are able to build a team by purchasing player packs. These player pa these packs are purchased with coins that are earned by winning a game, scoring a touchdown, ETC. They can also be purchased with real money through the user's PlayStation Network or Xbox Live accounts. As the user gains more coins, they're able to buy better packs of players, eventually building their ultimate team. And that's exactly how it worked out, right? There was It was, it was totally you know legit and everything like that. Uh, so here we are on PCGamer.com. Gambling or player choice, the furious debate around FIFA's loot box system. So what had happened with Madden Ultimate Team and again with, with FIFA and everything like that, they decided this revolutionary new idea where they would give you these loot boxes that you could ultimately purchase. But then what happened is that you X amount of players, it would basically just shoot out some players that you could have or not have, depending upon what you already have on your team. So that was how that was created. And again, it was a very, very positive thing for EA in the short term. In the short term, it was very, very positive because now players could go in there, buy, you know, essentially buy good teams and so on and so forth, uh, and, and you're able to develop them that way. However, this right here is multiple years down the road. This is 2000 and a one when this article came out so you can see the fact that people are gosh people this is really really not done so well in the in the one decade since it came out again at first very very monetizable but the perception of ea has gone down the tank because this it, eventually in a uh, denmark court was overruled that it wasn't gambling 
but it's close. So those are the items in there in terms of monetization that I could find. You know, ultimate, there's a couple other things, you know, I, I'm not, I don't really look into Superstar Knockout as much as I need to. I need to understand it a little bit more. It kind of seems like it's kind of the same process as that, but let's continue on with this. So the different factors to consider when talking about monetization. So there's a couple of them off the top of my head. Uh, the big game modes they have are Play Now, Dynasty Mode, Road to Glory, Ultimate Team. And then I have this original idea called the Creation Marketplace. Those are the factors to consider whether or not you know something is in Play Now, Dynasty Mode, Road to Glory, or Ultimate Team. Uh, the Creation Marketplace is its own separate entity. But breaking these factors down, let's talk about what we can essentially monetize that won't make people furious. So the first thing is the in the play mount now mode. And again, this actually feeds into multiple different places. So it's not just play now, but again, we have Jersey packs and playbooks. So Jersey packs should have stock jerseys or popular ones already included. Yeah, you don't want to have a home and away and then everything else is, you know, a, a Jersey pack that you have to buy. That would make people furious. As an example, Notre Dame's green jerseys, that should not be a purchasable item. It should just be in the game. That's how it should work there. You should be able to purchase classic jerseys and you should be able to purchase themed jersey packs as an example like the southwest conference jersey pack as an example remember smu baylor tcu and all those teams that were in the southwest conference that should be kind of a cool thing where it could have like a southwest west conference patch or something like that but i want to go back to those classic jerseys because there's a couple of them that weren't in the game in 2013 when ncaa 2014 came out that really they could do a lot of cool things with that so the first example here is, and again, this is really, really cool. So this is Texas State's jersey right now. Okay, got the maroon, got a little bit of gold there, got maroon helmets with the, with the reflective gold helmet. Now, their classic jerseys. Check these out. Is that not the Southwest Texas State Bobcats right there? Again, they switched their team name. Again, there's a couple different places like this. So as an example, so, uh, you know, Memphis State was switched over to the University of Memphis. Uh, there was a couple different things like that where you have those examples. This is one of them. Southwest Texas State is, these are sick uniforms again. But again, this could be something where this doesn't necessarily have to be a thing that's automatically on the game. I would love it to be, obviously. But again, if they had to go through, because this would take a little bit of research to go through and kind of create this stuff. I wouldn't mind if they had these throwbacks or have some classic jerseys as a monetizable thing. Like I said, also, so former conferences or things like that, those would be really, really cool. Or perhaps a really cool bowl game, you know, jersey that they wore just one time. Those would be things that they could do that would be really, really cool. TCU, when they had the Horn Frog with the, the rose on it, when they went to the Rose Bowl, another example. I also bring up this. So check this out. Here is USC's current jersey. So they just have this one little stripe right here. And then here is their jerseys back in the day. And again, they're mostly the same. The pants are the exact same thing. But you see here, they've got this, this middle uh, gold stripe and then a white on either side of it. Again, remarkably similar. And you, you can see here, this is Ohio State. They've got remarkably similar jerseys too. But I do think there are some things you could do there. That would be something they could include. I would really, really enjoy that if it was in the game. So with the playbooks, uh, and again, this is, it's, I, I thought this could be an option, but I hate it when I came up with it. I will come back to that later on, but playbooks, I mean, I, I don't think you should have all the playbooks, you know, uh, be monetizable or something like that. I, th I think that I have a different idea that's closely related to that in my creation center, but let's get continue on here. Next up in dynasty mode, I don't see any opportunity for monetization in dynasty mode. I, again, <laughs> nothing that wouldn't make people furious. It, can you imagine like, oh yeah, well you can make some changes or you could buy this, uh, you know, thing or that thing, but it's going to cost you money. I think people would be furious on that. Also road to glory, uh, possibly have alternate road to glory storylines. So I don't know how long it takes to actually come up with those, those scripts and things like that. I, I know Madden with their face of the franchise mode, it actually is kind of like its own story. They have actors and things like that. I don't know how that long it takes to make up that. But if there could be, you know, road to glory, you could be an offensive lineman, you could be a kicker or a punter. And again, I don't know. I'm just saying like perhaps like an expansion pack or something like that. I know people might be furious with that. But again, those are some things that I, I would rather have the money be there than on the next thing, which is ultimate team. Basically, I, I'm going to be honest here. Uh, Madden ultimate team and NCAA ultimate team, college, EA college football ultimate team. Just do the same crap you always do. You will anyway. That's where I'm at with that. The creation marketplace. So this is a unique idea I had myself. So you could monetize multiple different items that are found online. Rosters, team builder, playbooks, dynasty builder, and so on. So you can make your own or you could put them out on the marketplace and charge for them. You can make them free. You could charge for them whatever you wanted to do there. I know the rosters, that, that takes a ton of work. And a lot of people are going to be doing that themselves. 
but I think it'd be really cool. Again, you could even just upload like a classic roster, like, you know, 2000 season or the 1970 season or something like that. That would take a lot of work. I actually want to, want to see those people be monetized. And if they were monetized, let's just say they monetize it, at, you know, for every dollar that they make, they give EA 30 cents or something like that. I don't know. It's just an idea. Like I said here, it would allow for the community to interact as they do, but EA could take some off the top. <laughs> I have one line here that says, I feel all the hardcore fans hate me now, and I agree I slightly hate me too. Big reason why I slightly hate me is because the hardcores are going to get involved and do this a lot more. This would be kind of, I don't want to say punishing them, but it would be punishing what they kind of do uh, because of how much effort they put in. But perhaps it could also lead to better products because people are only going to get involved if it's worth it and if it is quality or they're going to pay for it if it's quality. Almost like an Amazon Marketplace, five stars on this, you know, uh, roster one stars on this one i don't know it's just an idea uh if this actually happened it would have to be cheap or i would revolt myself and revoke my u.s citizenship okay that's not 100 percent serious but it's like kind of serious okay I, basically what i'm saying though is the fact that we need to find alternate routes to find ea a way to make money beyond just ultimate team because ultimate team unfortunately a lot of concentration has been on that ea is really really been mailing it in on a lot of their games i mean again you see this across multiple games where ea is not very popular across the world so if they could just i think what the problem though is they're like well we could try a little bit harder but we've seen though that if we pull back a little bit of effort and we only give you know 25 hours a week to this project versus 30 or 40 but we concentrate more on those microtransactions we can make up for that difference again i don't know i'm not in those meetings but i want to find a way for EA to make a better product, but also still be able to monetize it beyond just the game in, in case it's some extra things that they do. Because if you guys understand the concept of minimum viable product in the video game world, that is something that, especially with the game that comes out every year, as opposed to a game that comes out once every five, six, seven years, uh, it's, it's tough to maneuver around that and they have to find a way to continually make money. These are just a couple of my ideas. What are your guys' ideas? Get in the comments right now, let me know. And if you absolutely hate my ideas, I willingly accept it if you hate a couple of those of those later ideas but get in the comments let me know right now also follow me on facebook instagram and twitter links in the description reach out to me there if you ever want to again you can comment on this video also be sure to like this video too but uh reach out any way you can i appreciate it for those of you who've made it here tw series tw 12 out of 12 in this series you've made it all the way here i appreciate it remember please like share comment subscribe this is not, again, this is the 12 I was going to do and I scheduled out. I am going to be doing a couple off the cuff here and there just to make sure I touch every single aspect of EA College Football. But I'll see you guys tomorrow. I am out.